Hi, welcome to the show. Today I've got another great guest. Mary Stern is with me, and we're going to talk about Habitat for Humanity and all that it's done for the community and all that you may want to help do for the community through Habitat for Humanity. So, Mary, thank you so much for being with me. My pleasure, Ken. Yes, it's uh, delightful because, you know, I do keep track of how many people watch this on Facebook and YouTube, and you always get one of the highest ratings. <laughs> people love to watch you, so um, uh, it's great you're here. Right, they want to see how many times I move my hands or <laughs> say things funny. Or, right. They know what you're up to is important. <laughs> and now you're with Habitat for Humanity, and that, that is really important to our community. Let's start a little bit. Let's, what's going on out there um, across the, uh, next to the... Um, the, the VFW, Le yeah. Right, the, the Legion, Legion Hall. Well, that's our Aspire Community Development, yeah. and uh, we will have 34 lots in that development when it's all completed. Uh, as you might remember, we dedicated the road last October, Turner Way, in honor of Bernie Turner, the founder of McMinnville Habitat. And uh, unfortunately, it has not stopped raining since they got the road in. We've been waiting to pave it since October. Uh, we have a wonderful contractor, Schmidt uh, Con Excavating is out there, and they've been waiting for a few days without rain where the temperature is above 45, 50 degrees, and we have not had that since that. October. So, wow. yeah, so that's a little bit crazy. But uh, that will happen. I know we'll get the road paved eventually. So in the meantime, we've been building around uh, the periphery, uh, first on Tilbury Street and then on Atlantic. And on March 4th, we had our de dedication of our sixth home out there, mm -hmm. but the 55th home that McMinnville Area Habitat for Humanity has built since 1991. 1991, 51 homes. 55. 55, six out there. So where are the other 49 homes? Um, mostly in McMinnville, uh -huh. uh, Debbie Street, Elmwood, you may remember Davis Street, but there we've also built homes in Amity, in Carlton, I believe, Sheridan, Willamina, and Lafayette. And when you said Debbie Street, that reminds me of when I was out knocking on doors. I knocked on thousands and thousands of doors, and a few neighborhoods stuck out for various reasons. But when I got back at the, down at the end of Debbie Street, and I did not know that it was a Habitat mm -hmm. for Humanity development. When I got at the end of the street, I looked back at that street, and I thought, what was that? That was amazing. <laughs> that was one of people were so friendly. Mm -hmm. The kids were out playing the street, just like an old-fashioned neighborhood. Everybody was visiting in other houses. People were waving across the street. People were sitting on their porches. They were just watching a wonderful neighborhood because it was so beautiful just to be there and, and look at it. Right. And the people, that how they greeted me, they were confident. They were able to, they weren't distracted by, I don't know, the warriors of the world. It just seemed idyllic. And then I found out from you that, well, and I said that to you once, and you said, well, that's one of our habitat. Streets. Right, right. And so tell me why that's the case. Well, I think in places like Debbie Street and now out in the Aspire community, we, we expect the same thing. A lot of that is because these folks are working or have worked on each other's homes. Mm -hmm. They've helped build... They've helped build and create the neighborhood that they're living in. And that is so exciting and so rare. You know, usually you move into your house and then you meet your neighbors around you. Well, this, it's building that community from the ground up and literally building it with their own hands. So it's pretty exciting. The children all play with each other. They all know each other. It's just, it really is a wonderful thing. And that, that sense of confidence um, is oftentimes acquired through learning new skills that come with building your home, owning a home for the first time. These are all first time homeowners and you know people who never thought they would be able to do that, to be able to have their own home. Uh, their children are provided with a safe place to uh, sleep and to eat and to study and they know where they're gonna be. The stability that it provides is just amazing. You came out to um, Sunrise Rotary a month ago and gave a presentation. And I remember you saying something about the advantages or the statistics that go along with, with home ownership. Do you remember some of those? Yeah, I do. And it's, you know, people talk about affordable housing, low-income housing, and oftentimes you think of homeless shelters or apartments. But there's a, there is a whole spectrum, and it goes from that... Um, 
from the, the uh, homeless shelters then to transitional housing to affordable uh, apartments and housing and then home ownership is at the top of that spectrum. And that is extra important, I think, and, and so valuable. The studies have shown that children of homeowners are 25% more likely to graduate from high school. They're 116 times more likely to graduate from college. Think of that number, it's just incredible. They have reduced in incidences of asthma and other health problems because they're not living in cramped or um, unsafe um, areas. They have fewer behavioral problems because oftentimes now kids have a space of their own. And it just, it, you know, it's, it's better for the entire family and for the community because now you have homeowners who are paying their mortgage and they're paying their property taxes, they're contributing to bond measures, they're contributing to their local society, and it just, they're, uh, you know, they become true citizens of their community. So it's pretty exciting. I just got religion around Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> Hearing that speech, that is absolutely All wonderful. Right. <laughs> Thank you. It's so great to have you at, at the head of this and to be back in town and giving us, you know, locally your, the benefit of your, your talent, your energy. In the last um, few months, you said things have maybe gotten busier even? It seems. It's just so crazy. <laughs> Tell us what's crazy. Well, there were so many, we have so many projects going on and we're, the plates are spinning, it seems, uh, everywhere we look. But we've been working on a women build project. So that that's a, a Habitat for Humanity international initiative that was started years ago. And we've had, I think we've counted six or seven women build homes in uh, through Mac Habitat. Did you bring a slide on that? Um, I did. There is a slide oh. that has a uh, um, picture of our newest women build homeowner, Jennifer Crane, and there she is up on the screen. Jennifer is beautiful, and her three beautiful red-headed children, uh -huh. who I'm very partial to. So there's Nick and Mason, and then Brooklyn is five years old. And Jennifer's, they've been waiting, the Cranes have been waiting for, they were selected two years ago. And that's a, an extra long time. Hopefully that won't ha re-happen in the future, but uh, they are, uh, Jennifer was able to work on her own house. She's worked on five other homes, but um, on the 18th of March, Saturday the 18th of March, we had the cookout, cook, kickoff, not a cookout, and she was able to build on her house for oh. the very first time. You've got the list there, recruit, educate, nurture, empower. What, what's that mean? Well, that's the purpose of Women Build. So to recruit women, educate them, nurture them, and empower them to build homes in their community and learn new skills and to help another woman and, uh, who, that's in their community and her children. So it's pretty special. So women will build the majority of the house? Well, women will, we, we encourage women to come out. We do allow men to uh, build with okay. us. We love, love to, we have our regular volunteers who are out there every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, rain or shine, sleet, snow, hail, it doesn't matter. Uh, those men and women are out there and they are incredible. And uh, we have groups who come out or individuals who come out to work with them. We're uh, gonna give a little extra love and care to groups of women who wanna come out. And mm -hmm. um, I was out there on the kickoff day and we were getting instructions on how to hammer appropriately. You know, you can't hold that hammer up near the head and you can't hold the nail with your two fingers, uh, but you have to hold it at the end so that you don't have to whack it as many times. And it was just really fun and interesting to learn the right way to do things. So it's right. It's, it's to provide women some empowerment and some skills and uh, a, a feeling of community and doing something and, um, Back and giving something back to their community. So is Jennifer's house the, the one house you're building underway right now? Actually, we have two houses two. underway now, right? Okay. Um, uh, the Camposano house, that should be done in May, and Jennifer's house should be done by the end of the summer. And Jennifer's house is the women's build? The women built house. So that's the one okay. you can see if you go out there right across from the Legion, uh, post 21, it is just, the walls have just started going up. So it's pretty exciting. So an invitation to women that have said, they are thinking, well, I would like to help. 
Right. They, when, when, when should they show up? They, sh they can show up on Saturdays, probably, is, or if there's a group, you want to put a group together, mm -hmm. they can contact us at um, machabitat.org or J, J A Y E, at machabitat.org. J is our fabulous uh, community engagement manager, and she sets up all the opportunities for volunteers to come and help us. Okay, and it's Saturday morning afternoon. Saturday, mostly 9 to 3, 8 uh -huh. to 3. Um, Usually we'll have groups out there on Saturdays, but Tuesdays and Thursdays as well. The groups are out there. Our, our core group is there every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 8 to 3. Under the guidance of our fabulous construction manager, KB Boatwell. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just ter it's a terrific place to be. Now, your most recent dedication, uh, the family there was Francisco and... And Maria. Mm -hmm. And tell us about Francisco and his volunteer Oh, habits. right. So we talked a little bit about this. Francisco, again, was selected two years ago. But he has been volunteering probably for about three years on homes, every home out in the Aspire community. And he moved into his home on March 4th. So he's vo volunteered on six homes now. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, okay. and actually, no, probably, and then on seven and on eight. Eight. Yeah, so it's just it's incredible, and he we had the women build kickoff on the 18th, and he'd only been in his home for two weeks, and there he was with his tool belt on, came over, and he said, "My family said, what are you doing? Go, your house is done." He put in his sweat equity requirement. Uh, months ago yet he came out because this is his this is his community so he was out there wow so this takes um support yes it how does. do you make this happen <laughs> Do, do, does does uh, the National Habitat for Humanity just send you all the money you need? No, they don't. Actually, we send them money. Oh, wow. We have, right, we have to tithe with them. How does that work? Well, per house, uh, how, by how many houses we build per year, we give them an amount uh -huh. for each of the houses. And really, that's to help with the international um, efforts that they have to build oh, homes yeah. internationally. But uh, they do provide us a lot of assistance and guidance and support. But, right, it's mostly local donors. We have some incredible, very generous donors um, who give money and goods and services. We recently had uh, the Jackson Family Wines, uh, Jackson Family Enterprises gave us a grant of $45,000 over three years, so $15,000 a year for our project. And they sent a group out to help and to oh. volunteer on the site. We have Washington Roofing, who has donated every single one of the 55 roofs that Habitat, uh, on Habitat houses. Okay, that just gave me chills. I know, <laughs> I know, incredible. it's incredible. It really is incredible, and they're just, they're so wonderful and generous, and they believe, they believe in the mission, and they believe in their community, and so it's really spectacular. Gormley Plumbing has donated. Um, grocery Outlet fills the cabinets of every single new home. The refrigerator, the freezer, the uh, closet that has all the cleaning supplies and a broom and a dust mop in there. The bathrooms, they put cleaning supplies and soap and shampoo and towels. It's just for every single house. They've been doing that for years. Um, Morris Carpet Cleaning comes out and cleans the windows for us before every home dedication. Dave's Garage Door, new folks who just started donating every garage door will be donated to us. And the, you know, the list of people who are stepping up and saying, all right, we wanna, we wanna provide, we wanna give back to our community and this is a great way to do it. Uh, fundraising. Fundraising. Your, tell us about your events. What, well, you have signature events. We do. And we, some's coming up. Yes. Well, we have uh, several per year. We usually count uh, Run, Walk, Ride. The, I said it without, good job. <laughs> without tripping over my tongue, which is a 5K, 10K run or walk, and then a bicycle race, which will be about 28 miles. And that this year, for the first time, will be held out at the Falls Event Center because they are donating the use of the event center. And there's a beautiful 5K trail out there. And so the 5Kers will go around once, the 10Ks will go twice, and it will be perfect, and we'll be able to have a party thereafter. So that's on June 17th. So that's one of our fundraisers. You Probably can, a Saturday. A Saturday, <coughs> right? Work Saturday morning. before Father's Day. So uh, a great family event. So kids are out there, families are out there, singles are out there. It's just, it really is a fun event. So that'll be great. June, we have June, June 17th. 17th. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. 
And you can go to our website, machabitat.org, and there's all sorts of information on there about our events. We, the Biggest Turkey is a competition fundraiser that uh, we, so we will have a candidate, not announcing it yet, they haven't announced it yet, um, but we, uh, we will have a Biggest Turkey candidate who is a pretty big turkey and a wonderful guy. <laughs> Great. Uh, and then the Nick's event, uh, the Nick's dinner and auction is our, that's another one of our annual event, another generous donation, Nick's Italian Cafe. They shut the place down. They provide an amazing dinner for us and appetizers. We get wine donated from local, um, all the local wineries. And, the, you know, last year we had folks saying, I want to give you all the wine. And we said, no, we can't really do that because we, we have, you know, nine other wineries who want to give us wine too. So we kind of share, we want to share the love and the, the promotion. And the generosity has just been overwhelming and it's incredible. Now, yeah, the next event, the, is what month? That's say? in November. And last year it sold out. It's Oh, yeah, yep, sold out very quickly. And 60 is the maximum that we can fit in there. So, wow. yeah, so that's great. And that, But then with Women Build, we have some events coming up. Uh, with it. We actually, the kickoff party we had at the Oak. The Oak hosted us, again, very graciously. And we had a party um, right after the, the Build uh, kickoff in the morning. And they had construction-themed drinks and people could vote on their favorite one by putting, I think they had little screws to put in the little pail uh, okay. under the title. There were three different drinks and you got to vote on your favorite. And I, I never found out what the winner was, but uh, we'll have to find out what that is. And then they're gonna continue to serve the winner and give a portion of the proceeds to, to Habitat. So you can go to the Oak and get- Get a, get a construction drink and right, and you'll be supporting uh, Habitat for Humanity. There's all kinds of and ways. No, that's pretty cool. You can pick up a hammer, you can- you Pick up a drink. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, let's see, Women's, Women's Build, that was an event that supports that. Anything else? And we have another event coming up, the Bowl Full of Hope, which will, um, it's by invitation only, so you should be getting your invitation in the mail okay. soon, ladies. All right. And uh, then we have our Veterans Build as well that we are working on. We have a great committee. Well, I should talk about my Women Build Committee. Patty Hadeland and Tenley Hart are co-chairing that, and we have some other fabulous oh, uh, people. And then we have our Veterans Build, which will be co-chaired by, is being co-chaired by uh, County Commissioner Stan Primazic and the amazing uh, Consuelo Christensen. Connie, m yeah. many people know her from the Legion and a former Biggest Turkey. Her it work gets at the- things done. Right, right, at Linfield College. But th the purpose, again, this was a, an initiative from um, Habitat International for Veterans Build to really engage veterans in some community service. Uh, there's a, a study that shows that 92% of veterans returning home want to engage in community service, but 62% of them haven't been asked. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna ask them, you come help us build. And uh, it really helps, it helps veterans with the transition from military life back to civilian life. They're working, they, you know, they have a goal in mind, they work as part of a team and it's, it's you know, a good outlet and a great experience and to really feel Feel like you're reconnecting with the community. And will the homeowner there, future homeowner, be, be, be a veteran? Be a well, veteran. that is our hope. Uh -huh. So we are opening up our homeowner application period that will mm. be um, open, let's see, April 23rd through May 26th. And we'll be accepting applications. And we are recruiting heavily for a veteran. At least we're gonna be selecting three families. We will be pouring three new foundations for three new homes this summer. One of them the veterans. And home. we're hoping at least one will be a veteran. And uh, so we're really gonna have a push to get information out to veterans that we want them to apply. We, we, you know, we, we would love to select a veteran and his or her family as our next partner family. So the veterans build community um, volunteer group may build more than one home. They may. Or, but the idea is now yeah. to start with one. Right. And that's one that you haven't started yet. We have not started yet. The street's yet. gonna have to be finished right. to get exactly. another lot because you're building on all the available lots. Right, on the, on the right now. external part, right. For a total of eight on so, the exterior? Um, let's see, yes, there'll be eight okay. homes on the exterior. And then how many more will go in that area? There will be 26 more inside. So some of those will be duplexes, mm -hmm. um, probably about half duplex and half uh, single family homes, yeah. 
So those will be built over what kind of period of years do you think? Well, it depends. It depends on how much money we raise. It depends on how many volunteers we get. And so that, you know, that depends on, you know, how we, how quickly we can move forward. So those are your two limiting factors, the money you can raise and mm -hmm. the volunteers that, that, that we can, can come right. and build. And it's... It's amazing because most habitats, and in the past, I think even our affiliate has struggled with finding property. Mm. But because we have this large development out there, um, the Aspire development, we're in a really great situation where we have so many homes, so many lots that we can build on. So for the foreseeable future, we know that we'll be able to build homes for folks. How did that happen? How did that, how did that fall into your hands? Um, they found, they looked for a parcel. They had a fabulous donor who was willing to mm. um, put up the money for the lot. They uh, found a seller who was willing to give a little bit of a break. They um, went through the land use process, but, and then they, they were grants from uh, Meyer Memorial Foundation uh, that helped with, uh, put the infrastructure in. And then Habitat holds the mortgage on their houses. Um, and so when the home, new homeowners, they begin paying their mortgage payments, those come back to Habitat. Mm -hmm. Zero interest mortgage for 30 years. Those payments come back to McMinnville Habitat, and we use that money to build new homes. Well, so we were able to sell some of the mortgages that we had to get some cash so that we could put the infrastructure in out there at Aspire. A lot of moving pieces yeah. that you just talked about to <laughs> yes. bring that together. Not anything automatic. It was very uh, creative and um, required. A lot There's of so work. so many things yeah. do in this community that when you look around and find out the history on them, they came down to some generous people as well. Always, always. It seems that's the story of McMinnville, isn't yeah. it? That there are so many generous people who, when there's a worthy cause, they're willing to step up and help. Um, so it's named, what's the name of the street? The street Turner Way, after our friend Bernie Turner, who we love. And uh, was, was he an, in, in back in 91? 91, he was the founder. Um, he had some folks that he... Um, brought together and said, we're going to do this. And they, uh, and he was their volunteer executive director for many years and got it going and got the first house built by uh, telling people that they were going to donate, business people. They were going to donate to this home and they were going to help build it. And I think that's how Harold Washington and Washington Roofing got involved. Bernie said, I need a roof. And Harold said, I'll give you a bid. And Bernie said, no, I need a roof and you're going to give me a roof. And... That's how it happened. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. Just building on what we've been talking about, generous people, there's a lot of philanthropic activity here in McMinnville and many nonprofits. Oh, yes. Right. And I have a lot of them, people from those various nonprofits here on the show, mm -hmm. and um, it's just inspiring. You've got an organization going. Well, we started, talk. I think, years ago. The uh -huh. executive directors used to meet together on a maybe regular or semi-regular basis. And so when I first got into this role, I called over to Jordan Robinson and Derek Price and said, hey, do you guys still meet? And, you know, what's the story? And they said, ah, no, we haven't for a few years and not really sure. So I said, well, let's do it. And they said, okay, yeah. And then some time went by and finally I kept pestering them. And then I said, all right, we're going to meet on this date. And so we had our first meeting last month and um, just the, the m and so the McMinnville Nonprofit Executive Directors Society. And so we're just going to meet on a monthly basis. We're going to share information that's useful about our uh, calendar of events so that we're not stepping on each other's toes. Uh, we'll be able to talk about different policies. I, you know, when it, we had the snow days and I thought, oh, I wonder if there's work today. And then I thought, oh, wait, I'm the boss. I have to decide if there's work today. But I don't have a policy about that. So I called a couple of folks and said, hey, do you have policies on uh, inclement weather? And they shared them quickly, sharing job descriptions and pay ranges and things like that will be really helpful. Plus, have a shoulder to cry on or, a, you know, a friendly face <laughs> Somebody who understands what you're going through and how how difficult and crazy this job can be, but also how rewarding it can be and how it's just so worth it doing it. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. There's another hero I just want to, um, that you mentioned, that is the city. Mm. The city of McMinnville 
has been uh, quite a participant in this. What they have been a great partner with Habitat for Humanity. From the very beginning, they discounted the permit fees, the building permit fees, and the uh, systems development charges. And now it used to, initially it was just for Habitat, but I believe they're expanding that now to other nonprofits who are providing shelter. And that was part of the affordable housing task force that the city put together uh, that has been meeting regularly and making recommendations to the city council for improvement. So, you know, the, the city really has been a fabulous partner with us and has really helped this organization get established and, and keep doing what we're doing. Mary, going forward, volunteers? Volunteers. And um, your fundraisers, so people supporting right. your fundraisers. Right. The fundraiser that's coming up next is? Uh, run, walk, ride, or, well, the Bowl Full of Hope is April 22nd. Run, walk, ride, June 17th. We'll have some other ones, little ones in there, uh, here and there. And uh, we'll put up everything on our website or on a Facebook page, which is McMinnville Area Habitat. Uh, for humanity and volunteers can go on the web page and find out how to call up and and, and volunteers can even fill out a volunteer application <laughs> online okay. which is so simple and you know you don't have to build if you want to be a volunteer we have fabulous volunteers in the restore we actually have some volunteers who are um, married couples the guys work out at the construction site the women work in the restore, and they, we, they're so dependable and so fabulous. You can work in the office if you want to volunteer in the office and help me clean my desk. That would be uh, much appreciated <laughs> as well. And we, we haven't talked as much about the restore. That's another big um, way that you're able to build more homes. Yeah, oh, it, the money that we raise there, right, helps cover the cost of operations for the affiliate, so it helps pay for my salary and the, other, the salary of the few staff that we have for our rent, our heat, all of those things, so that your, the donations of the folks out there in the community can go directly to building the homes. And when we're successful enough, there's enough money that we, you know, we can cover our overhead, but then also put that towards building homes as well. So the better we do at the Restore, the better it is for everyone. But I should say, we really, you know, we now are, will be looking for applicants to be our next homeowners. So our family partners will be looking for three families to select moving forward, and we're really excited about that. So we will have mandatory homeowner um, meetings um, it's April 23rd and April 27th. I think there was a slide for that as well. Um, There'll be a uh, session in English and then one in Spanish on both of those days. It's mandatory for anyone who's interested in applying with us. Um, we're not definite on the location yet, so check our website or call the office, and we will have that within, with probably within the next few days, we will have the definite, uh, definite location for those. So 56 families in the area have done it? 50, well, I guess there have been 58. 58, 50, let's no. see, wait, 55, 56, 57. 57 have done it, have yeah. gone through this process, and I think they would all say it's been a fabulous experience for yeah. them. Ch life changing, life changing and experience. And you're looking for the next one. Next three. Next three. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, Mary, I think we've done it. We've covered it pretty well, and we had to talk fast, but <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for being here and bringing this to the community in the way that you do. Oh, thank you, Ken. It's my pleasure. I all love right. it. I'll see you at the um, next dedication. When is it? Uh, we don't have a, an exact date yet. We're working on that. Okay. We're thinking maybe May 20th. Okay. All right. Very good.